Hello, everyone. Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is the seventh meteorology lesson on clouds. Let's begin by uh, discussing how clouds are classified. And once you understand the classification system, it's much easier to memorize what all the different types of clouds are. So we divide clouds into four classifications. We have high, middle, low, and vertical development. So a high cloud is has the uh, prefix of cirrus, cirro. So a high cloud is above 16,500 feet. And we have clouds like cirrus, those high wispy clouds, which we'll learn about in a bit, cirrocumulus, cirrostratus. Our middle clouds are between 6,500 feet and 23,000 feet. They're, they have the uh, prefix the alto, so an alto cumulus or an alto stratus. Low clouds are below 6,500 feet, and they are often called uh, strato type clouds, although stratus also means layer, so there's a bit of an overlap there in the nomenclature. Then we have our vertical development clouds, cumulus, towering cumulus, cumulonimbus. So anything with a cumulo, that's going to be a vertical development cloud, and it can start really at any altitude, but the thing is, it's not in a layer, it, it's going through all of those. So, for example, a cumulonimbus could start at 3,000 feet, but go all the way up to 40,000 feet. So it goes through all the layers, uh, all the different height demarcations. Here's a little picture to help you visualize it. Um, we have our low clouds down low in nimbus stratus, stratocumulus. And then we have our middle clouds, altocumulus, altostratus, our high clouds, uh, cirrocumulus, cirrostratus, cirrus. And then on the right side, we have our vertical development clouds or cumulus and our cumulonimbus. Let's discuss the formation and structure of clouds. So if you remember from uh, elementary school science, the water cycle, uh, we have air evaporating from oceans and lakes that forms into water vapor. Generally, air rises until the temperature reaches uh, the dew point. Then the uh, if you have condensation nuclei, the water vapor will condense around these condensation nuclei. In stratus type clouds, stable air, you end up with small water droplets and unstable air results in water, in large water droplets. Then of course, it rains from the clouds, you have precipitation and hits the surface, you have surface runoff getting back to lakes and into the ocean and that whole water cycle just continues. We'll now move on to recognizing the different types of clouds. So here's a slide with the clouds that you should be quite familiar with, and I'll just discuss them uh, briefly. Start in the top left corner, work our way along the top row, and then move by row. The first cloud we discuss is a stratus cloud. Those are your low clouds that typically cause poor visibility. They're a layer type cloud, quite easy to identify. The next cloud is the stratocumulus. So down low, if you mix a cumulus cloud, kind of those fluffy white clouds, but they're all really close together and they're all down low, there's no vertical development. Those are called stratocumulus clouds. Then we have nimbostratus clouds. Those are stratus clouds that form uh, rain, that rain falls out of uh, nimbo, uh, meaning rain, I believe in Latin. Then uh, uh, the last, uh, cloud in the top row is a cumulus cloud. Those are really easy to identify. They're kind of your nice fair weather uh, clouds, uh, kind of fluffy. Uh, our second row, altostratus. These are your higher uh, kind of mid-range uh, stratus type clouds. You often have these kinds of clouds and you kind of see the sun poking through them. They're not very thick. Our next one is an altocumulus. These are kind of like if you if you think of like a whole bunch of dots uh, of clouds kind of hammered together, uh, these are your altocumulus. Then we have altocumulus standing lenticular. These are your lens clouds that are often found on the lee side of mountains. They're quite rare for most areas of Canada. And the last on the second row, towering cumulus. These are cumulus clouds, but that are much higher. They've, they've developed vertically and uh, and maybe many thousand feet thick, 10,000 feet thick, 5,000 feet thick. 
Our uh, last row, uh, cirrus clouds. These are your high wispy clouds on uh, clear days. They are uh, typically made of ice crystals. And we have our cirrus stratus clouds. This is kind of similar to alto stratus, but higher up. It's just uh, sometimes the cirrus clouds, they all just kind of meld together and form an, a really high overcast layer. Then we have our cirrocumulus. They look similar to alto cumulus, or, but are considerably higher. And so kind of the, the pock marks, the, the little chunks of cloud are smaller uh, and higher up. And then lastly, we have the cumulonimbus cloud. These are your rain clouds that cause thunderstorms. They are uh, like the towering cumulus, but are much higher, uh, sometimes re reaching into the stratosphere. And they are characterized by an anvil. Uh, so you have this kind of vertical tower cloud, and then at the top, it gets blown over. And that's as the uh, caused by the cumulus cloud hitting the jet stream and the jet stream moving it along a certain area. Uh, we'll learn more about this in thunderstorms, but heavy precipitation, heavy turbulence, lightning, that sort of thing. Let's discuss the associated turbulence and precipitation with clouds. The stratus clouds have almost no turbulence, but continuous drizzly precipitation, and the precipitation size is small. Where cumulus type clouds are associated with turbulence, intermittent heavy precipitation, and large precipitation size. This is caused by the unstable nature of the air mass that cumulus type clouds are uh, found in. So a lot of updrafts, which causes the, the suspension of water droplets, which allows them to grow in size. Stratus type clouds are layer type clouds. They're continuous. Uh, you could as are associate with continuous light precipitation. Cumulus, uh, Red clouds are fluffy and associated with intermittent heavy precipitation. The prefix on the cloud type uh, denotes a secondary property. So alto is metal, zero is high, nimbo is rain. Let's do uh, some sample test questions. First one, which of the following is not required for cloud formation? A, condensation nuclei. So we do require condensation nuclei. Uh, such as dust, smoke, that sort of thing, for the uh, water vapor to condense around. B, uh, water vapor. So we do require water vapor uh, for cloud formation. C, rain. Uh, no, we don't require rain for cloud formation. Sometimes we get rain from clouds, but we don't require it to be raining in order for clouds to form. And D, temperature equals dew point. So this is also correct. The uh, temperature has to equal the dew point. The air has to be saturated. The relative humidity is 100% uh, in order for the water vapor to condense into, uh, into water droplets. So the correct answer is C, rain is not required for cloud formation. There is continuous drizzle. What type of cloud can you expect to produce this precipitation? So remember drizzle is associated with stable air, the water droplets are very small. And so we can go through those. So a nimbostratus. So that's going to be the correct answer. We are going to have rain, those uh, layer type clouds, rain clouds. B stratus, that is partially correct too, but technically because they are producing precipitation, they are a nimbo cloud. Cirrus, uh, is not correct. Those are usually made of ice crystals, very high up, rarely produce any precipitation. And then cumulus, cumulus type clouds uh, produce large water droplets and it's intermittent. So when we have rain showers, it's what we get from cumulus clouds. Last question, what type of cloud is made of predominantly ice crystals? So A, nimbostratus. Uh, so that's not correct. Nimbostratus are uh, made of small water droplets. Uh, B, stratus also small water droplets. C, cirrus, so high up, uh, cirrus is very high. Those are made of ice crystals. So that's going to be the correct answer. D, cumulus, that's not correct because cumulus type clouds are made of large water droplets or snow. That concludes this lesson on meteorology. Thanks for joining me and we'll see you on our next lesson.